next panel will be uh, evaluating what more is needed from the Philippines government and the Philippines private sector leadership for international companies and investors to make the Philippines truly the investment destination of choice. As you can see in the last survey, and this was conducted last summer, uh, you can see that the vast majority of the executives we surveyed in the Philippines representing American companies expect profits and only a uh, very small percentage expect, uh, expected that profits would, would fall. 71% of those we surveyed said that their company plans to expand in the Philippines in the coming years and um, about uh, two-thirds expected to expand their Philippine workforce. Well, as we just heard from, from the USTR, you know, our, our trade relationship with the Philippines continues to grow. You know, um, the U.S. has been trading uh, goods and services with the Philippines for the past 100 plus years. Right now, the Philippines is the U.S.'s 37th largest trading partner and 33rd largest export um, destination. Um, and since 2009, U.S. exports to the Philippines has grown ne nearly 50%. Now, the Philippines continues to be a leader uh, in the ASEAN region in IP uh, enforcement. They, of course, have strong patent and trademark laws. Um, however, there is a lacking in prosecution uh, issues. Um, and so that, that may be one hindrance, I think, for U.S. companies. Um, some of the, but of course, IP protection is very key for U.S. companies looking to do business internationally. And so the fact that the Philippines is strong in that area is, is, is a plus for U.S. companies. The Integrity Initiative actually um, encourages companies to pledge, you know, transparency in their uh, governance and, you know, to encourage uh, corporations in general to adopt integrity uh, policies. And this Integrity Initiative is very important because although we're not able to cure 100% the problems, if you address one side of the problem, which is the private sector, there's, there's no corruption if there's, no one is willing to, to give in. And if you address one part of that uh, spectrum, then you address the, the other side. So I, th I think in general, certainly we at Cargill would see the Philippines as having a number of very significant um, comparative advantages in agriculture. We've been in the Philippines since 1947 and have operations there in, in kind of coconut oil processing which is one of the largest exports in the ag space for the Philippines, and it is an absolute comparative advantage for them, as well as some work in the, in the seaweed and texturizing industry and support the local um, animal, animal feeding industry and work actively there to support local Filipino farmers. So I think as we look ahead, the, the sector certainly has a really lot of bright spots in growth in the Philippines, anchored around a rising income and stronger consumer demand. Um, so I think one thing that would be helpful and critical, and it's, it's a pleasure to be here with the ambassador and the, and the Secretary of Agriculture Reform, those, those land law changes that can modestly allow a little more local consolidation among Filipinos to gain some economies of scale. One thing that's important for U.S. companies doing business in the Philippines uh, to consider is uh, finding a qualified partner to work with there. Um, and finding the right or wrong partner can really make or break your success uh, in doing business in, in the Philippines or any other country for that matter. Um, and so the U.S. Department of Commerce, the, the commercial service who I specifically work for, um, actually has a lot of programs in place to help U.S. companies find qualified partners to work with um, uh, in the Philippines. Um, some of the, the stronger industries that we're seeing uh, in the Philippines for U.S. companies, of course, infrastructure, and we heard a lot about infrastructure in the first panel and a lot of the challenges that U.S. companies face in this area. Um, of course, we know that the current administration has uh, enacted the public-private partnership program, which is um, addressing a lot of these infrastructure problems uh, in the Philippines right now. But, you know, we see a lot of these issues being rectified in the near future. Um, electrical power systems, ICT, aerospace defense, medical, these are all promising sectors that we are seeing, uh, that we are you know, advising our U.S. companies on potential in the Philippines. And so we're edu educating our clients on these industries in the Philippines. I think the mere fact that uh, we, our educational system has grown and the mere fact that uh, uh, our, I guess our citizens are becoming more global 
the mere fact that we've got uh, uh, our kids being educated either here in, the, in Europe or here in the States or in Europe, and when they go back to the Philippines, they, they become more global in perspective. Uh, from my own point of view, if I'm a lawyer practicing in Manila and I concentrate my, my, my services in Manila, that's only 100 million people. But if I practice all over ASEAN, that's about 650 million people. So we cannot be parochial. And I think, uh, a, 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 in fact, an associate of mine in a law firm is now a partner in a law firm in Vietnam, heavily practicing in Myanmar. These are the things that I think we should be able to tap. And joining ASEAN, uh, again, um, and, and participating, eventually joining the TPP, I think would enhance those things. So it's really the mindset, the global connectivity and the mindset that we have that we must erase. And the fact that uh, 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 if we can ease the doing business part, I think we'll be able to compete more.